Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing well. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with that VGC 2021 Series 8 content featuring a team based all around Groudon. <laughs> now, this is a standard Sun team that we're going to see in the format at the minute. And the next couple of episodes, we are going to be featuring more centralized metagame teams, more standard teams. And for the pure reason that it's good to get these teams out of the way, but it's also really good for you guys to know exactly how these teams operate and give you the opportunity to try them out that's the big thing because if you're struggling against matchups against these teams you're going to see them a bunch in the format then the best thing to do is just take them for a whirl see where their weaknesses are from your point of view and what you can do in your adapting of your own team building to get around these matchups and kind of identify those weaknesses and in, in kinks in the armor so to speak so today's team as i say is based around groudon it is going to be that standard sun team you can see it on the screen in front of you now it is the incineroar the venusaur porygon 2 gives you the trick Trick Room mod and also a way to reverse Trick Room. You've got to be careful with how you're positioning it though. Also gives you a nice stab against Landorus and things like that and other Ice Weak Pokemon that you generally don't have throughout the team. Uh, then you've got the Charizard. Obviously with the safety goggles there, it gives you the immunity against Sleep Powder, Spores against opposing Venusaurs. It could be a little bit problematic, especially if the sun is on the field. And you've got Groudon there. We've slapped an Assault Vest on this one and then we've got the Regieleki with that Sash. Gives you a bit of security to go on with. So there will be a poker piece down in the description below and as always at the end of the episode i'll throw up a rental code so do stick around for that one without further ado friends let's get into this first one today let's have a look at this sun call okay so first up today this is a good one for us we've got a standard kind of kyoga build we've got tornadus kyoga cartana clefairy landorus therian and incineral so obviously straight away the tornado is providing the tailwind support going to be a bit awkward for us especially with that kyoga with the rain there makes it difficult to kind of position ground on in these matches and also the landorus as well gives us a few issues because obviously landorus very good against this team can hit the incineral for good damage the venusaur for good damage charizard for good damage not really too worried about the ground on and definitely doesn't worry about the regieleki so for that reason alone i think we have to bring the porygon 2 to this match the trick room flip is also going to be quite nice as well to uh, get around potential tailwind shenanigans from my opponent um okay so i think reggie is obviously quite a good pick to start with obviously you need to be careful around the um the potential uh landorus lead and i think p2 is not bad either uh we're kind of forcing if we see the 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 tornadoes come out to see maybe a taunt there um which leaves reggie open to potentially take advantage of that and uh, do some work on the Kyogre before the speed controls in effect. Um, we're going to need our sun for sure. Groudon's good, and especially if we can get a Trick Room up, we're in a decent position. And um, I think maybe Charizard as our last one. So late game Charizard sweep. Let's see how we can get on in this one today. But yeah, like I say, today's aim of the game was the next couple of episodes. We're going to have to feature Groudon and Kyogre at some point on the channel. I want to feature all the restricteds or the more relevant ones anyway and it's nice to kind of start out we started obviously with our content last week but getting into the bare bones of the meta game it's quite nice to feature these kind of predominant and common archetypes early on because it gives a chance to see them in action and also a chance for you guys to try out the rental cards and like i say get your hands on with these teams find out the chinks in their armor and maybe look at them and think well we could maybe change this with it because uh, this aspect of the team isn't that great. So you can maybe develop him, put your own spin on it, and it really does help in a, in a lot of ways. So, got the Landorus, got the Tornadus out. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a couple of options what my opponent can go for here. They can Tailwind, they can Earthquake, for sure. They can Taunt at P2, stop the potential um, Trick Room. Um, the thing I would kind of probably like to do is protect Regieleki and just go for an Ice Beam into Landorus. Now it's risky because they can go Max Quake into Regieleki Tailwind, um, which wouldn't be ideal because it does break our Sash. I think one of the things we could potentially do is just go for a Volt Switch out and then an Ice Beam because then it kind of mitigates that play a little bit. If they're going to Max Quake into Regieleki, the one of the problems is... Ooh, Lander is going to protect. Uh, yeah, one of the problems is with that is uh, they're going to break our Sash, so we don't have that um, security kind of fall back on. Okay, so we see the Taunt come out. We're just fine. We get a Volt Switch into the Tornadus, which is ideal. Take it down with Sash. So it's, it's very close to being kind of null and void, which is exactly what we want at this point, this stage. 
Um, now we can bring in Groudon. Can bring in Groudon and get a sun up, which wouldn't be a bad play. Not really going to do too much. The thing is, we could bring in Charizard here. I think Charizard's better. I kind of want to put off bringing our sun in straight away, if I'm completely honest. And we're kind of baiting the lander is going from Max Rockfall here into our into our Charizard. Uh, the Ice Beam obviously coming out. The thing is, we could probably we're probably going to see probably going to see the Kyogre come in. Now we've got a couple of options where we can read maybe a switch out from the Landorus into the Kyogre and a Tailwind from the Tornadus, which isn't a bad play from my opponent um, at all. Or we could switch a Groudon in. Or we could switch Regieleki in, in all honesty. Because... Uh, or we could just protect Charizard. We could just protect Charizard. Might not be a bad play. But also... Thing is, I don't want to get you turned in and the Groudon. Uh, I think we'll bring in. Uh, no, we'll protect Charizard and we'll go for an Ice Beam. I think you're going to U-turn out onto the P2 though. That's my only concern. Is like it could have given us the opportunity to go for. Um, like max the Charizard potentially, but then this is obviously the situation that could occur where they're going to probably Tailwind now and go max Rockfall into Charizard, which is still going to sting. But I imagine we're going to see a Tailwind. Okay, well the Groudon switching here would have been the best player all around. But you can see my point where I don't really want to switch Groudon in if we see maybe a U-turn and Kyogre come onto the field because that would be that would be disastrous. Wow. <laughs> Even behind the protect does so much. It's just nasty damage. I mean it's to be expected, right? They are life orb as well. We do take it. And uh, that's that. This is the beauty about P2, you know. We're not proccing a weakness policy, which is great. Tornado's going down now. I'm gonna see the introduction of Kyogre 100%. Now we can trick room. Now we've got the opportunity to trick room if we need to, which is ideal. So, Tailwind is in effect, so we just got to keep that in mind. And just got to play it kind of the best we can because P2 can take down that Landorus next turn. Just depends. Yeah, Kyogre coming in. Now, I think we're going to have to bring in Groudon now. My opponent's probably going to read into this. Um, but the fact is, like, a Sun boosted... Yeah, and we're still taunted, I think. Yeah, for one more turn. One more turn. But we can get rid of the Landorus here, which is all always nice. And we can kind of pin the weather in uh, if we don't see the Kyogre switch. If we get rid of the Landorus now and the Kyogre's still in the field and we got the sun up, obviously we win the weather war, which is always something to um, to try and do when you've got kind of weather from both sides of the field coming in. We still got Regieleki with our sash in the back, so it does help us against the Kyogre a bunch. We just have to stall out these trick room turns. We're going to see a max quick and it's going to be into P2. Yeah, they're going to double down into us. Ooh, with that life orb, it stings. It does so much damage. It does so much damage. Man, we're going to see a water spout, but I'm hoping. Hoping a water spout is not going to be enough to take down poor old P2 here. Nah, no way. Grab on with the assault vest, chunking that. Chunking that. Getting chunked, but taking it. Uh, okay, we take down the Landorus. So there's a big part of my opponent's team kind of done. Um, still got to deal with this Kyogre though. At least it's stuck in the sun. That's the big plus for us. And P2 shook off its taunt. We can potentially get it to a Trick Room this next turn, which is which is good. Um, ooh, Clefairy. Ha, now the helping hand shenanigans begin, don't they? <laughs> um, okay, what have we got in the back? Charizard, Regieleki. Okay. How many turns of Tailwind have we got left? Two. Two too many, I think. Nah. Uh, we sack these. Bring in Reggie, Char. Protect. Double protect. Yeah, I think we'll be alright. I think we'll be fine. Um, yeah, well, Precipice. I don't really need the Trick Room now. I'm going to just try and recover with P2 if I can. I don't think we'll take a helping hand. Water Spout, though. Big spout. Here we go. Yeah. Groudon, you did well, my boy. You did well. 
P2, you did amazing. You, you came and you, you got rid of the threat that we needed. Um, just a little bit unfortunate it didn't work out like we wanted it to. Okay. Charizard on his last legs. And Regilecki in good fighting shape, to be honest. So we're not in the worst situation here. We've got plenty of turns of the sun left. Um, they've got one turn of Tailwind left. So I think we can lock this one up. Let's just see. Let's not get over complacent. I'll start throwing the match by clicking random buttons that don't make any sense. But we're going to double protect here. We need to stall out this last turn of Tailwind. And then um, as long as it's not scarfed Kyogre, then we're, we're all good. <laughs> That's where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, obviously, the um, it'll be, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine because whatever happens, we're going to Electro Web and we're going to Max Charizard and we're going to go for the... Um, we're going to go after the... Clef <laughs> Do we go after the Clefairy? Do we go after the Clefairy? I think the residual damage is always going to be useful. Um, the Tailwind Pit is out. That's good. Um, we'll Max. G-Max Wildfire. We'll go after the Kyogre. Um, well, Electro Web. Or do we go after the Clefairy? Is the Clefairy going to protect here? I don't think it will. I don't think the Clefairy will protect. Huh. That's all like one option. I just don't want to waste this, you know? I want to get as much damage into the Kyogre as possible. Like, the Clefairy is not going to be doing too much. Watch Kyogre protect. Clefairy go for Moon Blast. Moon Blast. That's what we're going to see. But I would imagine not. I would imagine the Kyogre is going to try and get the water spout off. Clefairy is probably going to go for follow me, I think, in this situation. Uh, to pull in any sort of shenanigans from the uh, the Thunderbolt. But, you know, there's an argument here. Could we just max Regilecki? Well, we could, but the residual damage, I think, is going to be way more useful here than um, it would be gone max with Regilecki. Because we could go for Solar Beam, but it's going to hit into the Clefairy most likely. Um, could go for Max Airstream, not going to be useful. Dang! Yeah, we got it wrong. Okay, well. Oh, double protect. Okay, well, well. This is why the residual damage is good. Now, we are going to lose Charizard, I think, to the solar power uh, boost. And maybe the wildfire damage is, would be better into the Clefairy here, because it's doing absolutely zip to that that Kyogre but Charizard survives okay here we go here we go we're back in business boys because this became 10 times easier right now because we just blast burn oh uh, wildfire the Clefairy we haven't got blast burn um yeah we electro web as well because we have to um we know that the Kyogre is not scarfed uh it's probably mystic water it's in a real bind um, and once the Clefairy's down, which it will be this turn, uh, there's no way that Kyogre's going to beat Regieleki one-on-one. No chance. No chance. So this game is pretty much locked up. Uh, Charizard doing some nice work in this first one. I think Groudon playing its role perfectly. And P2 kind of showing why it's in the team against these Landorusses and things that are maybe a little bit problematic to the team in the first place. So a good example, I guess, of uh, what the team can do. And you know, we're not low ladder at the minute we're pretty high up we're in the top 100s i think i don't know what my opponent is coming into this one but uh they've got a decent ranking uh, electro web coming out hit both targets perfect obviously the friend god's gonna help but i mean reducing that kyogre's damage is the big thing keeping the sun up on the field as well as another one uh big zard gonna be able to remove this clefairy pretty easily bye 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 baby pinky there we go so it's nice to see a Clefairy faint as well. Always nice. There's a water spout coming out. Doing not bad damage, you know. Like, even in the sun, it's taking a bit of... It, it's taking a good chunk of damage. But, uh, this is why Kyogre's just so strong. The sun fades, but now it's just it's too late. As that, uh, the residual damage from the G-Max Wildfire is just so invaluable at times, you know. Really just ticks over. Because now, even single target, I doubt the Water Spout has got enough. Even if the Kyogre could get the jump on us somehow, um, you know. And uh, just locks it up with the Thunderbolt being able to take it out. And that is a very good game to my opponent. 
and a nice one to kick us off with today as i say i think we've had um some nice examples there of how the team can kind of function well and uh to be honest like the sun uh core isn't isn't something i'm like super in love with i like it as a, co a concept because as we know, Venusaur is the god. It is the god. Uh, G Max Venusaur is amazing. So, um, spoiler on the uh, the old thumbnail for this one. Okay, so up next today we have an interesting team. We've got a Zacian Colossal Dragonite. We've got P2 Venusaur and Torkoal. Interesting that we've got the Colossal there with no real means of setting up the Surf, unless it's like Scarf Dragonite with Surf and Inner Focus, so we can't fake it out. Now that could definitely be an option here um and it's a little scary as well to be honest you know obviously we can't bring charizard here but you know like groudon makes a lot of sense but then we've got to worry about the venusaur if we bring groudon because that could be a big issue i mean we could bring groudon and charizard uh, it's definitely an option um i just feel a little bit vulnerable if i bring charizard up top um because like charizard's great against venusaur in general but it might be better to bring it like late game and it might be better to go ground on venusaur turn one um and then we can really pressure the zacian the colossal things like that i think we'll bring charizard in the back and do we want we probably want incineroar in this match as well if I'm completely honest, because then at least we've got a way to kind of uh, mitigate the attack boost from the Zacian. <sighs> the Colossal though, but I think straight away my instinct would be uh, it's going to be Scarfed, Dragonite with Surf, Inner Focus. It makes sense for this team, I guess. There's not really any other way to kind of self-proc the Colossal Steam Engine ability, unless it isn't Steam Engine, which would be very odd um okay well here we go here we go uh i've got a couple of options here i think what we could do is potentially hmm this is where we want charizard on the field you know um we can definitely go sleep powder into p2 we could max with groudon here and i don't think it's a bad idea from the the concept of my opponent's team it's not a bad idea we could go max flare into the opposing venusaur the issue is if we see the venusaur the opposing Venusaur max, well, even Sleep Powder, that would be the problem, I think. So I think what we'll do is, um, yeah, we'll switch Groudon into Charizard. And we will go for Sleep Powder into P2. Just to try and put it to sleep. Uh, because we want to try and mitigate the Trick Room. We don't want to leave Groudon out uh, susceptible to a Sleep Powder here. And obviously, uh, if we see the Venusaur max on the other side of the field, max... Uh, Overgrowth is going to do a bunch of damage, which isn't going to be great. Um, but they can't really damage the Charizard. That's the big thing. Yeah, they can't really hit us for great damage. So we should be all right switching in at this point. We just need to shut down this P2. That's the big thing for us, I think. See who's is faster. Oh, come on, Ally Switch. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Come on. Okay, well, G-Max Blind Lash coming out is fine okay well, i mean we take that pretty comfortably it's slightly annoying it's slightly annoying uh i would say slightly annoying i will say very annoying seeing the ally switch turn one but it's got to be expected it's in the format and like that damage there is just horrible because like we're already at 50 percent. i know we've just switched in but at the same time now i don't really care who i hit here you know um i'm gonna go after the venus so i'm not playing these ally switch mind games I'm just going to go after the Venu. We've seen Ally Switch. Whether they go for it again is another thing. If they do, then the P2 takes a bunch of damage. I don't think the Charizard's going to get knocked out here. So I don't think we need to worry too much about that. Uh, especially if we max. And if we waste another Sleep Powder, we waste another Sleep Powder. If not, then we don't. But uh, this is just my, my my mentality of playing around Ally Switch. I kind of don't really want to entertain the, the mind games. Uh, because... It's a 50-50 at the end of the day. Like, half the time you're going to get it right, half the time you're going to get it wrong. I think, like, most of the time, just play the game as if it wasn't there. Like, that's how I kind of try and look at it, you know? Here we go. There's the fun. The P2s do nothing else but setting these ally switches up, which, yeah, I don't mind. Maxu's coming out. 
fair enough. Yep, yeah, it's going to take a bit of damage. We could have airstreamed here as well, you know. There is the option to airstream. But hopefully between the solar power and the residual damage, Charizard should still stick around. And this P2 at this point is kind of locked into not really having too many options other than the uh, the ally switch to, to go for. Um, okay. Because it is going to go down the next turn, whatever we do. Either sleep powder it. How do we max guard here? I don't think max guard in here is really going to do as much good. I mean, we can airstream for sure. It would give us the faster Venusaur. Um, and we can sleep powder again into the P2. We could just sludge bomb into it. Because if it ally switches again. Yeah, let's sludge bomb into it. This time around. Because then we can remove it if it doesn't ally switch. They may be thinking of the long game, going for the, yeah, the Maxu is going to take down the Charizard. Yep. They are plus two as well, you know, so it's, you know, it's a little bit tricky to deal with. Obviously, it's going to be hitting a lot harder than it would have done before. I just hate Ally Switch so much. I really do. It's such a, a frustrating move to play against. But, like, you know, it's part of the format. It's part of the metagame, so you can't complain about it, you know. You've just got to, just got to get on with it. Got to deal with it. Now, can we take a plus two Leaf Storm? I don't think we'll be able to. It's not life or Venusaur, so you know. Um, we do have Incineroar coming. We could bring Incin in. We've got Fake Out support then. It's not bad. <clears throat> so we'll see what my opponent tries to... Okay, well, there's Asian coming in. That's fine. We will outspeed it. We can obviously go for a fake out into the Venusaur. Um, Earth power into the opposing Zacian. We can double up into the Venusaur. Um, where do we fake out the Zacian here? Uh, I think we need to fake out the Venusaur here. The thing is, does the Zacian protect? That's the the big thing. Because if they protect, it kind of it's kind of like a dead turn almost, isn't it? But with the Zacian asleep, it makes things a little bit easier to deal with. I think the Zacian protects, though. I really do. Now, this is where we could sludge bomb the opposing Venusaur because I doubt they've got protect. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's double in on the Venusaur. No, they've got Protect. How many Venusaurs run Protect? Not many. Oh, they double Protect. Okay, well. <sighs> can we take a plus two Earth Power? That's the big thing. Like, can we? I don't know if we can. But we're going to have to try and put this uh, Zacian to sleep this next turn. So residual damage chips in on that Venusaur, which is very useful. I mean, the thing is, if we can get rid of the Venusaur now, I feel like Groudon can kind of close this game out. Um... I just don't feel super confident about being able to take a plus two earth power from, from Venu. And I don't really want to switch in. I mean, we could switch in, grout on now, put the Zass into sleep, and sludge bomb. I'd... It's an option. We've got to put the Zass into sleep, I think. We could, uh, we could earth power it, but I don't know if we'll get it from this range. You don't know how bulky it's going to be either. So it'd be nice to just put it to sleep. And if, if Incineroar can take the Earth Power, which I'm very doubtful of. I'm very doubtful of. Sludge Bombing. Take that all day long. I think that's a bad... Oh, they mustn't have Earth Power. They mustn't have Earth Power. Okay, so if we remove the, the Venusaur, like I say. Sleep Powder hits. Boom! There we go. That's what we need. And then the Flare Blitz will take down the Venusaur. Incineroar probably will go down to Recoil and the Vine Lash damage. And then we've got Groudon to come in. Your boy Groudon. Because the sun does end here, I think. Which is perfect. I oh, know, I think Venusaur. Yeah, sunlight fades. Okay. Incineroar not going down. But 
we've got Groudon to come in. Yeah, we switch Incineroar for Groudon. Then we've got the in Intimidate to bring back in late game. Put the Zacian down at minus one. Okay. Hmm. 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 Okay, the sun's back up now. Do we just double in? Do we... Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll go for... We'll just double in to... Yeah, because Groudon beats Torkoal easily. 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 Um, double in on the Zacian here. I mean, we could parting shot on the Torkoal, which would give us a bit of an easier time. But... Uh, I think we just go after... Well, we could just Flare Blitz as Asian and go Earth Power into Torkoal. Yeah, I think that's fine, whatever we do here now. Yeah, Zacian asleep. We'll get the Flare Blitz off and the Sun boosted. There's no way the Zacian takes that. Earth Power. Oh, with the Life Orb. Nearly enough, not quite. The Torkoal just hanging on there. Need a few more EVs there, I think, peeps. Um, Zacian down. So the Sleep Powder coming in super clutch. This was a tough game. I didn't know if we could actually manage to do that. I think the lack of Earth Power on the Venusaur was the big thing for us here. Uh, as we see a Heat Wave come out, it will clear the field, but uh, just pave the way for Groudon to come in. I restricted, quite fitting to finish the uh, the episode today with it and um, clean up this talk hall with whatever we want. Should we go for a Precipice Blades or is it a little bit risky? <laughs> it's too risky. I know my track record with Precipice uh, Precipice Blades in the past has uh, not got the best relationship. But this Groudon's a good boy. This Groudon's a good boy. So we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. Here we go. And the battle was cancelled. Okay, they didn't even want to risk it. The, the, you know, the, the sensible thing there is just Fire Punch, obviously. Don't Precipice Blades. I'll just save the, uh, the comments down below. But uh, great game to my opponent. And we'll jump over now. And uh, we'll get you guys that rental cord. Okay, friends, here it is. Here's the rental for today's team. It is your standard sun build, and it is here for your use. I hope if you try it out, it is very useful, it's beneficial, and you enjoy it at the end of the day. I think it's a really nice build. I think the concept of this team is really great, and I think it's definitely something that you should try out, and if you want to go down the sun route, obviously with Groudon Venusaur, then this is a good starting point for you, and then you can kind of create your own kind of spin on this team going forward. I think the team in general is amazing. I've had a good couple of games with it today, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found today's episode beneficial. Uh, we got to see a little bit of the goat Venusaur as well in that second one, which is always appreciated. So I hope uh, you're feeling the love for the Venusaur because we always do here on the channel. And um, I'm going to wrap it up there, friends. So have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you through the week for more restricted action in this VGC 2021 Series 8 format. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.